Coming off a huge weekend in the NFL, and we got Thursday Night Football. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and that's right. Week 5 is already here with some Thursday Night Football. We're coming off a 3-0 sweep on Monday night. Won five units in week four. Let's keep that rolling this weekend, and it starts today. That's right. But before getting anything, we have two more outlier giveaways. That's right. All you got to do is like the video and leave any sort of comment you want below. We'll pick two random people. You're going to get one free month of outlier. If you don't know what outlier is, guys, it is a betting tool that must be used by everybody. That's just how I feel about it. It's one of the best tools out there. Uh, one of the most affordable tools out there as well. It's just, it has tremendously helped me with all my bets. As you guys know, we've showed all the pages. If you see any graphics or websites, that is from Outlier. Um, but if you want to be a good sports better, uh, long-term, profitable, Outlier is the way to go. Click that link below to sign up, and you at least get a seven-day free trial as well. But uh, anyways, leave that comment below. We'll give out some uh, some free months. But let's get right into it. I got an NFL fun fact. This is a, kind of a weird one. I'm going to be honest with you. Only one NFL coach has ever won a championship in the NBA. Bud Grant. He helped the Lakers win the title around 1950 before he took over as the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. I remember where I was that day. That was just a crazy day. Um, anyways, that would just be crazy to see an NBA player right now retire and then become an NFL head coach. Um, all right, in this video... It's going to be quick. It's going to be simple. We're going to recap Monday Night Football, and then we're going to preview and give our best bets for Thursday Night Football between the Bucks and the Falcons, and I got two of them for you. And then, of course, we'll finish it with that recap. So hit that like button if you haven't already. Leave a comment below. Helps this channel grow. Helps that algorithm so more people can see this channel. We appreciate every single one of you. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as we are oh so close to 29,000 subscribers. All right, let's get into it, and it starts with the recap. All right, before we get to the recap, just want to remind you on the Outlier giveaway, if you already have an Outlier account, you can still get one free month applied to it so you can be a part of it. But here's the Monday Night Football recap. A nice 3-0 and day. It was awesome. Uh, Tony Pollard over 12 and a half rush attempts. Easy win. I think he had 16, 17, somewhere around, around that. And then David Montgomery, anytime touchdown. I wish I did the first touchdown because that's what he did. He scored the first touchdown of the game and made it sweat-free for us. And then this third one was anything but. It was sweaty. Um, he wasn't really a big part of the game. He had a 10-yard catch early. We were talking with the Discord, and I was just saying, man, I just we just need that one big play he can get. And then, sure enough, a 70-yard touchdown. It was a beautiful thing for 3-0 day. Uh, so we won five units last week in Week 4 to help make up for that terrible Week 2 that we had, but we are now up .58 units on the year. So that is the recap, but now it's time to talk some Thursday night football. All right, week five starts out by heading out to the ATL where the Falcons host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Falcons, minus one and a half. Total in this game is 44 points. Uh, Falcons are close to being 0-4 right now if you haven't watched them. They've won two games by a total of three points, but you know what? It's football, so they are 2-2. Two and two. Let's just talk some trends, stats, whatever it is. If you hate trends, I apologize. But over the last three seasons, under is 21-12 and 12 when Baker Mayfield is one of the starting quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins trends. How about 3-7 and seven against the spread in his last 10 primetime starts? 1-10 against the spread for Cousins in his last 11 indoor games. That's not good, considering his home team is indoors now. Um, Cousins struggles in night games, too. It's, it's a little past his bedtime, which, you know, I get it. 1 p.m. Eastern or earlier, 59, 33, and 2 straight up at a 64% clip. But any games after 1 p.m. Eastern, so like these night games, 20 and 39 straight up, 34%. He's just tired. That's just what it is. Thursday's home teams are only 39 and 52 against the spread since 2019. And the final trend I have for you, the Falcons are 2 and 10 against the spread in their last 12 games as a favorite. All right, now let's talk some injuries. Bijan Robinson, questionable, but it looks like he is going to play. Mike Evans, limited practice, expects to play. Ray Ray McLeod, questionable. Uh, Kayla McGarry, their stud offensive lineman, is questionable, so that's, but it looks like he's going to be out. That makes two good uh, offensive linemen that the Falcons will be missing again. And then the safety, uh, Antoine uh, Winfield for the Bucks, he will be out again this game, it looks like, as well. So, you know, if I had to play on the side, I don't have one. So that's not really helpful to you, but I'd probably lean on the under if I had to pick a side or a total. But I have two best bets. They are player props. Let's stay hot with these. The first one is awesome. It's a kicker prop. Give me Chase McLaughlin over one and a half field goals at minus 125 on DraftKings. These are both going to be half unit plays, but I was oh so close to making this one a full unit play. I absolutely love it. We have tailed field goal props versus Atlanta before um, in cash, and the reason is because they give up a lot of field goals. They give up the ninth most field goals to their, to their opponent. 
A big reason that you look at with field goal props is red zone defense. In Atlanta, they've allowed the fifth most red zone attempts. So they're allowing teams to get down the field, but then they kind of have that bend, don't break it defense. Um, and that's why teams settle for field goals and things like that. So Falcons have allowed a touchdown on less than half of their opponent red zone trips. That's right. So their opponents get to the red zone. They've scored a touchdown in less than 50%, obviously leading to more field goals. That too high safety look that they like to play so they don't give up the big play. We just kind of funnel everything in the middle. Um, and in fact, they're actually a top three defense in allowing 20 plus yard plays. So they do not allow a lot of them, kind of like the Denver Broncos, like we talked about. But McLaughlin, let's talk about his leg. Seven for seven on field goals this year. 29 for 31 last year, a very accurate kicker. Kickers are already 12 for 12 versus the Falcons in four games so far, averaging three per game. Um, only one kicker went under two field goals versus Atlanta. It was Group A last week. The Falcons can struggle to defend the run sometimes, but the Bucks are bottom eight rush offense. So, you know, I think it's going to hurt them when it comes to the red zone. Um, you know, if the team's just running all over you, then they're probably going to score some touchdowns. And we saw the Saints do that in the red zone a little bit too. So I love this bet. Give me Mr. McLaughlin over one and a half field goals as my first best bet. And then the second one, we're staying on the same team. It's a plus money. Let's take a chance. Give me Chris Godwin over six and a half receptions at plus 135 on bet 365, half unit play. I almost went with six plus receptions, took it down, and then went like under 55 or something. You could do that as an alt line. But let's go for plus 135 on bet 365. I thought that was great value on that book. Um, Godwin is a receptions machine. I'm an absolute receptions machine. He's over this line in two of four starts so far, but the two misses versus the Broncos elite pass defense, which we talked about, and he still had six and a blowout of the Eagles last week. He has never had less than six receptions yet this week or this year. It's just been absolutely crazy. Six catches is his floor. Um, now let's look at the matchup. Falcons 28th versus wide receivers in receptions allowed. Um, and then uh, there's a big butt on this one, though. The Falcons have allowed 50% of the receptions to the wide receiver position to come via the slot. Guess where Chris Godwin plays most of his uh, routes or plays most of his snaps out of the slot. I mean, this is a great matchup. Um, it's the sixth highest rate in the league, by the way. The Falcons giving up 50% of the receptions to that slot wide receiver. Uh, Falcons also play cover three on 41.7% of passing snaps. That is the sixth most in the NFL. Why does that matter? Godwin leads the team with a 20, almost a 28% target share versus that cover three defense. Um, and then just target share in general. Godwin, 34 targets, 26.6% target share. That is the seventh most in the NFL. And he also has the third most receptions in the NFL. Um, he has 34 targets. Mike Evans, 29. And then Kate Otten is really the only one with over 20 targets as he has 21. Shout out Kate Otten from our high school. Um, but I'm pretty much betting a guy that just gets absolutely peppered with targets. He just absolutely does. It's a great matchup here. I think Atlanta's going to funnel everything in. I think uh, Godwin's going to have a little better game than Mike Evans here in this one um, as the slot receiver. And like I said, he's never had less than six. So as long as this game can stay competitive or maybe they even fall behind by a little bit, have to catch up with the pass. They don't run the ball too well. Um, I think he's got a great chance at seven plus catches. So at plus 135, I love the value. Give me Godwin over six and a half receptions along with McLaughlin over one and a half field goals. Those are my two best bets for Thursday night football. But before we get out of here, let's check out the recap. All right, there it is. My two best bets for Thursday night. Let's stay hot. Chase McLaughlin over one and a half field goals and Chris Godwin over six and a half receptions at plus 135 on bet 365 for that one. Both half unit plays. If I have any added plays, they'll be in the pinned comments on X and on Discord. I probably won't. I don't feel like three plays for one game. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Again, leave a comment below. Hit that like button so you can have a chance to get that one free month from Outlier. Appreciate the support. Hope everyone has a great Thursday, and we'll talk to you soon.